CYAD. No, it's not. Yeah, Dan, that's exactly right. <clears throat> All right. Well, 8.45 here. We've still got some time. CYAD below the 200, I'm not a big fan of it right now. LGVN. Yep, so you have ascending support. Good. But you also have descending resistance. That's not a blue sky setup because of the move uh, from the past days. Thanks, Roberto.
Hmm. Well, I hope you guys have all had a, a good week. It's been uh, it's been pretty good. I mean, a little a little slow, a couple slow days. Not as good maybe as the week before, but well, that's that's the way it goes. Some weeks are a little bit better than others. <clears throat> all right ryan see that's what i like to hear one trade a day um i was talking to our support team and they were uh, mentioning a student who was um frustrated and feeling like they weren't where they want to be and we said all right well you know what, what what are you doing and what's what's going on and which classes can we kind of point you in the right direction uh, to tightening things up? And it seems, at least in part, of a bit of a case of overtrading. And this is so common, and I'm not trying to call anyone out. This probably could be almost any beginner trader, but overtrading is so common. You just, it's reaching, it's grasping, it's, it's that desperation to try to get green and you know once you break the ice with the first trade and you lose then the second trade is easy you're like you know what uh, whatever i'm already red so who cares and you just it's a slippery slope and so ryan just said that he's been uh focusing on one trade a day and he's had a green month now and that's been like that was like a big turning point for him focusing on one trade a day and if we go back to the small account challenge that i did in july that's what i was doing one trade a day that's the small account way. That's why it rhymes. Otherwise, it wouldn't rhyme. One trade a day is a small account way. So that's got to be the focus. Now, once you get a few weeks, maybe a month of consistency under your belt, then you're going to start to feel like, okay, I can take a second trade. Maybe I can start taking two. Maybe I can start taking you know, two trades a day for for two weeks and then three trades a day for you know, the next two weeks and you start to scale up and then that's a natural evolution because you'll realize wow uh, there's more than one opportunity every day so it but it's about as a beginner trader trying to develop some level of consistency trade the best leave the rest focusing on a quality setups uh, and I know, you know, you take that first trade, you break the ice, and then it's a loser. It's very easy to take that second trade, and then your losses are uh, getting bigger and bigger. Uh, by the way, for those on uh, YouTube and, and Facebook, I'm just going to put my uh, disclaimer up here in case you hadn't already seen it, in case you didn't already know that most beginner traders will lose money and that my results are not typical. So really, take it slow. If you're thinking about learning how to trade, don't trade money you can't afford to lose. We've got about seven minutes until 9 a.m. I do see that CYAD is um, coming back up. It's had a bit of a history of false breakouts. The 200 moving average is at 540. Um, a $32 million private placement. Price of $5. It's an 18% premium to the 30-day average. Now, a private placement below current price, See, so here's why this is bullish. It's bearish that they're raising money in a way, but it's bullish that someone is willing to pay 20% of the current trading price on $35 million or $32 million. So it's being interpreted as, wow, this person's got confidence, and it's in a way a self-fulfilling prophecy because they're like, hey, everyone, I'm confident. I'm really confident. Right, right. So will other people notice this and buy it too? And they're probably hoping so. And then that helps their own position. But it's a risk because it may not work. And other traders, investors may say, well, wait a second, maybe this guy's just an idiot for paying 18% above the current market price. Uh, and the fact is we do have the 200 moving average at 540. So we do have some upside resistance. Um, the float 16 million shares, it's low, but not super low. 
it has a history of some false breakouts already. You can see these red, this red candle here was a false breakout. This one was at 80, uh, 8 a.m., so that was the alternative display orders that would have gone through. So that one, um, high volume ADFN orders, but not super worried about that. But then that's also a false breakout there at 706. So it keeps rejecting this level. So this is probably resistance up here. about four minutes until 9 a.m. So CYAD, I'm not saying it's a no, I'm just saying it's a, for me right now, a maybe. LGVN, I prefer the front side of the move. Uh, trades like this are on the back side of the daily chart. It's already made the big move and now you're trying to catch bounces off the low. Given that we're not in a super, super hot market yesterday, or maybe the day before, well, the day before was okay, but I don't know. It, it's Friday. Yesterday was a little cool, a little cold, so I want to have a little extra due diligence on uh, trades. And I think that that's not a bad approach. You know, if you do take a couple losses or you have a red day, being a little bit more hesitant and just making sure you're really going through that checklist. Because yesterday, I, I did jump in a little too aggressively with a little too much size. And looking back, it was a very similar trade that I had on IMPL. A stock halted on news, and the resumption was a big flop. Uh, so I think I do need to be a, try to keep that um, in my mind a little bit more when I'm looking at the next one that's halted on news, and I'm looking for a resumption pre-market because that's now two that I've gotten smoked on. One, the uh, IMPL was in August, and um, this one, that was, or was it maybe September? I don't know, but yeah, maybe it was September. It was on this day. But in any case, it was pretty bad. I mean, it did, IMPL did go up 15 points uh, pre-market before reversing, uh, but I, I still managed to lose on it because I got in too high. That was the problem. Um, but I did the same thing yesterday. So yeah, that was, look at that spike. So if you were quick and I wasn't quick enough, so I lost on that. I don't remember how much, but probably 45,000 or so, 30,000. I don't know. Maybe more. Uh, but that's not that that was just to say that I'm a little bit more cautious this morning uh, just because of a red day yesterday. Uh, so a little bit more cautious means just looking for more reasons why something might fail and being a little bit more um, uh, maybe a little less optimistic. Just I want to see something that really is telling me. And the thing is, when it's when it's going, I know and I almost I, I, I almost don't even need to think about it because my it just that muscle memory and just that reaction kicks in. Uh, and so right now I'm hesitating on CYAD because it doesn't quite look right. And it, it might turn around or it might base out here and then give us a break through five, but we still have that 200 moving average. So oh, actually I have it at 529 as well. Um, you're right on that. I. I didn't open up my chart enough. It's kind of a problem with the charts that the more you open them up, the, the moving average will change a little bit. But it's, it was still pretty close, so within 10 cents is not too big of a deal. All right, so 30 seconds till 9 a.m. Ten seconds. Right, Barry, above market value.
So a little bit of a pullback there on that one. Of X, 6 million share float, very light volume. Seems to be some news right near the, let's see. Uh, it's a little hard to trust initially because the volume is so light. Uh, I'd be a buyer if it breaks 450, but seems like there's already some sellers on it. See, there's a hidden seller at 437. So we're not getting the break of 450, so no entry yet. I'm just not totally sure on it because the 200 moving average is right here at 436. It's got a history of these red candles. So no trade on that one. LGVN pulling away a little bit from the 200. Uh, sorry, from the volume weight average price, but coming up to this descending resistance line. So it's going to run into that resistance line, I think. Yeah, ENFA is a uh, SPAC. So I believe it's a SPAC at least. Um, let me just double check. Anyways, it's not moving enough just yet. Approved a BuzzFeed merger. Hey Patrick, good morning, uh, LGVN. Mm -hmm. Still in this wedge. But it's higher priced. So, you know, if it goes the wrong way, it could it could be pretty nasty. No, LGVN is not a blue sky setup. No, it is max. It goes in both rooms.
I hear you, Dan. I'm I'm looking for a trade too. I would love to find something to jump on, but I usually October, November, December are good months for me, typically. So that's typically the case. LGVN. I'll take a starter there of LGVN. It's breaking that descending, and I'm going to add over 35. So now let's see if we get a squeeze up to $25. Holding 3,500 shares. Holding uh, 1,400 new orders, $25. So that was one, one trade, the add. Uh, increase the risk so it took some profit and let's see if it breaks through 25 the pre-market high is 2508 right now holding to see if we get a break through the high of this candle 2488 Holding 374 shares for right now. I want to see whether it can hold this level. It's a break of descending resistance. One minute pullback, important to watch. The high of this candle is 2488. CYAD is coming up to five. There's break of five on CYAD, so I missed that one. So we'll watch the first one minute pullback see if it holds and then gives me a dip entry for a move back up through the high of 2488. Um, the ascending support line would have been a fine entry if you were willing to take a little risk because it was below VWAP at that time. Watching here, so that's nice. We do have a double top there at 89. Uh, my order is now at 25.03 for the next trade. If we break 25.66, then we've got room back up towards 30. Nice on the dip. Added at 61 to buy the dip. We've got this ascending support line here. Looking for an add at 88 and 98 for the break through 25. This is a flat top breakout on the five minute on the one minute chart. Added at 88. Now looking for 95. There we go. Took some profit. New order. 520, 2525. I meant to sell half. I took the whole thing off the table by accident. High of that candle is 25.25, new order is 25.35. Watching for a dip if it holds 25, added at 25.05, it's holding the dip. Now looking for 25.45. Let's see if we squeeze up to 25.50. So we're getting a little bit of action here, this is good to see. There's 19. Holding 500 shares, exactly. Coming up towards our double top of the pre-market level that I had drawn. No, actually this was a level from the other day. We're up 39%. The high of this candle is 2535. 
Nice, Chris. Good job. Watching dips. This is uh, giving momentum. It's not exactly parabolic just yet. You know, it's it's moved from 24, 25, and we're a bit extended on the five minute chart. So it's definitely time to be a little cautious, but we had our first pullback, and this is now the second pullback, the high is 35, so new order would be 25.50. That way it's ready to go. Add it at 16. Now looking for the break through 45 to add. Watching 25, 35, and 45 for the squeeze up through 50. Added right there. Now we're looking for the squeeze through 50. So as this starts to pull away, we want to see the break through the half dollar. Profit order. Let's see if we get that pop through 50. Average is 27. I added a little on the high side. It seems to be defending against 2550, holding just 500 shares. New orders at 53. Watching for a dip, added at 11, bought the dip. I actually filled 2503, nice dip trade. Very nice dip. Right off that yellow ascending support line. Now let's see if we pop back up over 2525. So my average is 2503 now. I always try to take a little profit when I catch a nice dip like that. And then reduce size. We did break below that yellow support line. Nice on CYAD. Reminder for those on uh, YouTube especially, in case you didn't already know, trading is risky. Most beginner traders lose money. So I encourage you to trade cautiously and not trade with money you can't afford to lose. I would also remind you that uh, YouTube broadcast has latency in it. We use ultra low latency streaming servers for our Warrior Pro students, but uh, YouTube doesn't uh, doesn't offer those. Watching for a dip off the nine moving average. On a stock like this, two or three cents, Dennis. Higher price like GameStop, maybe 15, even 15, maybe 15. Dip trade, 24.91. First candle to make a new high there. We'll see if it breaks back over 18. 
if it rips through 20, 25, 25, I'll add for a retest of 2550. Added there for the retest of 2550. I didn't go with big size on this. Let's see if we break through 2530. This is showing some good strength. So the high that candle is 38, over 38 would be an add for a squeeze up to 2550. Little chop there, back to flat. We'll watch for another dip entry off the 90s. My daily goal is 20,000, so I'm about halfway there. This is setting up uh, an ABCD setup on the one minute. Oh, Josh, man. Yeah. I probably would. Just, it's a, it's a base hit green day. Dip trade at uh, 93. Again, buying the support off that yellow line. Looking for the break back over 25.10. So, small little trade there. Holding 500 shares at 95 average. Yeah, bad daily on that one, Larissa, I agree. So added on LGVN here, I'll add again at 38. This is a um, five minute setup now. We've got a five minute bull flag. So we're gonna look for the break through 2538 on this one minute ABCD setup. Added at 28. Next adds 38 and then 48. Back to flat, small $600 loss, and added back at 53, 66 to buy the dip. Bit of an irrational sell-off there, false breakout. Let's see if we pop back up over 85. Still a five minute setup, which is good for uh, the open. We didn't have a premature break on the five, but the one minute popped and then didn't hold. So made back most of what I lost on the dip entry. Let 
The reason you get those rejections is because these are critical levels. And so if a critical level doesn't hold, like this right here, then you have a lot of people who say, well, wait a second, this is no good. And then short sellers also get aggressive. So I cut the loss at like 25.10 and then added back at 24.66, 40 cents lower. About seven and a half minutes to the bell. Dip trade at 41, bought the dip again. Looking for the pop back over uh, 50, there's 60. Actually I have a nice fill, uh, 2429. We'll see if this pops back through uh, 55. Back to flat, 38. So for those of you tuning in on YouTube, would like to learn a little bit more about my strategy, get a better understanding of how I choose uh, the stocks that I trade, you're welcome to register to a uh, replay of my free workshop, Day Trading 101. I'll give you the link right here and pin it in the comments. Day Trade 101, Back to Basics Workshop. So thank you for uh, those on YouTube tuning in this morning. Seems like pretty slow Friday. Thank you, Van. I'll just say Van because it's easier for me to pronounce. Thanks, Van. I appreciate that. What are you looking for, Richard? Time and sales? Four and a half minutes to the bell. So I have a time and sales window here. Um, let's see. Sales. So I don't broadcast level two data because if you broadcast level two data, everyone that's receiving it, well, you're supposed to have market data agreements, which of course I sign for myself, but I'm not, I can't sign them for everyone else. So you pay for the market data if you essentially give it away for free, that's a problem. And this is level one data, the charts, which you know is already a little bit of a problem, but the cost and therefore my liability is a lot lower 
on level one data than level two data. Let's see properties. Uh, if you go into the live trading archives, though, you can see uh, videos that are my trading monitor. Those might be helpful. All right, so we've got about two minutes to the bell, so I'm going to end the um, broadcast here for those on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed the morning show. I hope you hit the thumbs up. I hope you're subscribed, and we'll see you on Monday morning. Warrior Pro students will keep broadcasting here for uh, the open, and we'll see what we get.